Okay, everybody. So let's talk about biomolecules. In particular, we're going to talk about carbohydrates and lipids, aka sugars and fats, aka um, some of my favorite things in the universe. So bio, remember, these are like the, oops, bio we know means life, right? Things that are going to help sustain us, keep us alive. Molecules, we're talking about um, basically elements that are joined together. So two or more types of elements joined together. Biomolecules, here we go. All right, so the key thing here is that idea of carbon, right? Carbon makes up carbs, it makes up lipids, it makes up proteins, it makes up nucleic acids. Um, we're only gonna talk about carbs and lipids, but carbon is that central element, right? Carbon is the womp. Carbon is kind of like, I like to think of it as like the Beyonce of all molecules. Because carbon has, and hopefully we remember this from chemistry, there's those four valence electrons. So it can easily bond with other organisms, other organisms, other elements, my bad. It also can form covalent, um, or double bonds, right? So it can form, form those strong covalent bonds. It also can form double bonds. So it is basically, like I said, think of it as the Beyonce of all. Again, like I was saying, it has a great bonding capacity because of that structure, because of that valence um, electron structure, because there's four of those eight electrons in that outer shell. So it has lots of options, right? Like Beyonce, it can sing, it can dance, it can act, it can um, take, weird fashion sh take weird fashion shoots, it can have one kid, it can have two kids with questionable names. You don't know, you don't know what it's gonna do. So um, the thing about carbon, moving on, the thing about those carbon atoms too is that they're forming these sta stable covalent bonds, right? And it can connect with a variety of different atoms. So it's very complex but it's stable. And this is what we need for our, our, in order to sustain life. Everything in our bodies are made up of carbon. Everything that we have that's alive, our cells, our tissues, our organs, all have carbon because of these stable covalent bonds. Um, all right, so here's what happens with all this stuff. So we have carbon, carbons are central, right? Guys, I'm gonna get real weird with this Beyonce reference. So like carbon, it has these, fun, or like Beyonce, carbon can connect with many different groups. So, and those groups are called the functional groups. So if carbon were to, it can connect to a variety of different molecules or groups as we call them, right? So if carbon were to hook up with an OH, like this, just go with my drawings, it's gonna form an alcohol, okay? Just like Beyonce, it can hang out with Destiny's Child and be a thing. It can hang out with a Jay-Z and be a thing. You don't know. It can hang out with Blue Ivy and be a thing. It's going to connect with many different groups of, or many different types of molecules. And when it does that, it changes what it can do. Okay. So carbon is going to be that, that one common denominator. And the functional groups are kind of going to come and go, and they're going to change what carbon can do. And that is the basis of our carbs and our lipids. They're both going to start with carbon, but what's attached to them is going to be different. So when you have a carbohydrate, you're going to have something different attached as, if, as opposed to if it was a lipid. And that's why they're different. And when you change what it's attached to, you change what it can do. So carbohydrates, right? So monomers, mono meaning one, right? So you have basically, carbohydrates are going to, and We'll talk about this too in class. They're going to um, form, when we talk about a monomer, we're talking about basically a ring. Literally. I hope this is right. So that's, and these are little carbon atoms here that kind of connect. If you're getting a chemistry headache, no worries. We can break this down in class as well. So that's one, mono, one. This is a monomer because it's one ring. Okay, that's your glucose. And we know glucose is that fuel that our body needs in order for it to perform life's functions. However, if you want larger carbohydrates, which are called poly, meaning many, saccharides, which means sugar, it's just gonna make another, it'll link up with another carbohydrate. And this becomes a polysaccharide, many sugars. Make sense? Hopefully. So carbohydrates are awesome because of this, because they're all basically formed around the glucose molecule. When you have um, these simple sugars that link together, things get more complex. Now, carb, oh, here we go. So um, carbohydrates' main job is to, 
give us short-term energy, right? So that's why when you like, when we have a lot of carbs, whether it's bread, pasta, sugar, donuts, which are my favorite combination of carbs and lipids, when you have that, your body uses that really easy. Because these are simple, these are very simple structures, our body can break that down. And when they break these bonds, like when you break these bonds, you release energy, right? And that's what gives us the energy for our bodies to kind of continue on, do life's things, all that good stuff. But it's short term. So that's why we get these sugar highs. Because our body will consume it, consume it, consume it, and then um, we get that release of energy, and then a lot of times we'll have, we'll, you know, kind of have um, periods of low energy, we might get headaches, things like that. So that's your, your simple, those kind of like, that's your simple sugars. With your more complex sugars, you have these four big polysaccharides that are critical to us. Starch, right? Our breads, our pastas, all that delicious stuff. The glycogen is the stuff that's going to be basically what happens is if we eat a lot of sugar and we're, our body can't use it, glycogen is kind of, it's, um, think of it like stored energy, but only short term. So when it's, when our body needs it, it goes right to the, it goes right to the starches first. It's stored energy and it's stored in your liver. So the glycogen is going to be stored in our liver. The starch is going to be, um, like I said, your breads, your pastas. Now, your cellulose, this is in plants only, okay? We don't really have cellulose. That's going to be kind of in the plants. And same with this business right here. This is actually, ready for this, your fingernails. Gross. So your fingernails are made of the structure. Um, the, uh, you, when you've got bugs that have like a heart or an, uh, an exoskeleton, that's made of, of this, this chitin, this, this um, polysaccharide, things like that. So yeah, so the cellulose is the stuff that's in plants that basically gives it, allows, it's in the stem that allows it to stand up straight. It's that kind of stuff. Um, so these are the four major complex carbohydrates that we need. Starches are basically for animals, right? It's what animals need to consume. They give it cellulose is for plants. The glycogen is going to be the energy that's left over. If we eat too many carbs, our body has to store it, and it's stored as glycogen in our liver. And this chitin is the stuff that makes up kind of our fingernails, our exoskeletons, things like that. So you have here, this is a glucose model. This is your monomer right here, like I mentioned before. This is one say a glucose molecule. If you link them together like this, you're going to get your starches. So monomer one, complex carbohydrates, polysaccharides are going to be um, more than one. Hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully you want a donut. Lipids. All right. So here's the fun thing about lipids. These are your fats. And you know what? Yummy but they will kill you. So they do not dissolve in water, okay? And they don't really have this like monomer to polymer. Like we saw before where you have a glucose molecule and it links together to form like a starch. That's not how lipids work. That's not how lipids get down. Um, they're a little bit more, they're, they don't really have a monomer or a polymer. They just basically have one structure. What we're gonna look at are your triglycerides, right? So these are the fats that we eat. When we eat fat, we're eating triglycerides. And we need fat. We need fat. Fat's important. Fat helps us, you know, it helps things like with our joints. It helps with digestion. We need a certain amount of fat. It helps with our skin. Um, it helps in a way to keep us hydrated or to keep water in our bodies. Um, but here's the problem is that if you eat too much of it is when you get, when you're into trouble. So lipids themselves are basically made up of three fatty acid chains and a glyceride. If you're like, wiggity, wiggity, what? No worries, because we'll talk. Here's your chain. Again, you're seeing this common element. You're seeing carbon in there, right? So here are your fatty acids. This is what it looks like, okay? This is, this tristerin is just a type of fatty acid. Don't get too, con or I'm sorry, it's a type of triglyceride. Don't get too caught up about that. So this is kind of like the backbone. 
And then you just have these long carbon chains with hydrogens attached to them. That's what a triglyceride looks like. Now, you guys are probably too young, but you might, they might, when you go to the doctor, they might test your blood for triglycerides. Because if you have too, if your triglyceride level is too high, that means you've got too much fat in your blood and you need to, you need to watch, you need to watch it, basically. Now, what are fats, what do fats do? Fats are great because they give us long-term energy. The starches and the, I'm sorry, the, the carbohydrates, which starch is one of them, they're going to give us short-term energy. This is going to give us long-term energy. If you look at this structure, this is way more complex than a single carbon ring. So it's harder for our bodies to break this down. So the energy is going to be sustained over time. It's, this is not like eating, you know, a bagel. A lot of times we will like shove a bagel in our face in the morning and we'll find that we get, hung, we get hungry quickly, right? Whereas if we eat fatty fat, and I mean like good fats, right? If we eat our good fats, then we're going to find that like we have, um, we have energy, more sustained energy. We're not as hungry as quickly. Um, avocados are a great example of a good fat, right? They have a very healthy fat, and we'll talk about the difference between good and bad fats if, if, we like, if you'd like. Um, so this is a much more complex model. It takes longer for our bodies to break down. And because of that, with every, mount, with every break of, the, of this, of the carbon bonds, it's releasing energy. So as opposed to getting this burst of energy with the starches, you're getting these like short little sustained bursts of energy that are keeping us um, less hungry, keeping us, you know, not as sleepy. So along with lipids, you've, we've got a couple others, like steroids is a lipid, right? Phospholipids and waxes. <clears throat> the roids are going to be, um, cholesterol is one. Also our sex hormones. What? So our estrogen is actually a steroid. It's actually a lipid. Um, phospholipids, these are the ones, and we're going to talk more about these. These are the ones that make up our cells, our cell membrane. Oopsie, oopsie, cell membrane. And then the waxes, here you go. Think of this as um, uh, when you've got, like, shiny leaves on plants. I think I spelled shiny wrong. It helps to keep the moisture in. So it's that kind of shiny surface on plants that helps to keep the moisture in. That's, that's a wax. That's a fat. It's a lipid. All right. If you're like, what? No worries, guys. This is not easy. What I want you to do is be sure to write down, write down questions because we're definitely going to talk about this stuff and I can clarify some of the things that I mentioned. But just really quickly in summary, what, um, carbohydrates and lipids, they're carbon-based so, uh, carbohydrates, you've got things like glucose, which is one ring, and they connect together to make star things like starches. They're short-term energy. Lipids, they don't really have, they don't really link up like um, carbohydrates do. They're basically just three fatty acid chains linked together like in a, in a, with a backbone like we saw in that previous picture, and they're for long-term energy. And they can be good and they can be bad, and we can talk about when, when lipids go bad. When lipids go bad. All right, like I said, please bring your questions, um, and we'll make sure to clarify them, and you guys will leave smarter, um, better dancers, maybe um, better singers, just like Beyonce.